Good evening everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table we're going to be doing the follow-up to uh, me retrofitting the new upgrade parts to my P2. Um, I promised a sort of an objective um, measure of uh, whether we get any increase in, in um, flight time by comparing it to the hover tests I did before. But also I've done some subjective testing, which I can't really measure, but I can tell you how the thing felt to actually fly. So that's what we're going to discuss. Before we go any further, as of course regulars know, the tradition here on the kitchen table is to share a beverage of choice this evening. Uh, it's some Jack Daniels. It's a medicinal Jack Daniels for me uh, in a Thunderbird 1 shot glass. So cheers. Mm. Not medicinal because I'm ill, but because everybody else in the house is. And uh, it's been a bit of a tough day uh, looking after them. So back to the matter in hand. So yeah, for those of you who uh, watched, I showed you how you go about um, uh, removing the original motor and speed controllers and replacing them with the upgrade uh, motor and speed controller and then obviously marrying that with the new upgrade props to get your, your, your package. Um, if you didn't see that and want to have a quick review of it, it'll, uh, it'll be over here somewhere. You can open that up in a new window and have a look. Um, so basically what I did was I put the, um, uh, I, had, I did a benchmark um, test uh, for the uh, previous video where I looked at the hover time with my stock aircraft and then using exactly the same setup and exactly the same battery I then immediately did a hover test just changing to the new upgraded props and we got about 30-40 seconds less flight time which was kind of understandable. These take a bigger bite of the air and they're not optimized for working with the um, with the uh, original motors and speed controllers. So that kind of made sense. So as you can now see on screen, what I did uh, the other day, I finally had a window. I'm really sorry. I think I jinxed the weather in the UK because I didn't have a flyable day that I could seriously do the testing with similar conditions uh, until just this weekend. Um, but I did, I found a day that was nice and calm. As you can see, the sun came out and the wind was light. And uh, I've speeded this up uh, quite considerably. Uh, we did the same hover test. Again, I haven't updated any firmware on the aircraft since the last time. This aircraft hadn't flown between the last hover test and this one. The only thing I'd done to it was charge the same battery pack up one more, once more to 100%. And then the idea is that we run a timer between full charge and when I first see the first stage warning. So this isn't a maximum flight time by any means. It's literally you get first stage warning and I and I called it there. Um, so as you can see, I got about well, just under a minute less than I did with the stock setup. Now allowing for, um, I would say, allowing 30 seconds plus or minus for slightly different conditions and maybe the wind was or wasn't blowing and you know having to put in some control inputs to prevent it from drifting into the shed i reckon pretty much broadly there's no improvement on flight time purely based on a hover test by f fitting the upgrade parts so if that's what you're after if you wanted to try and squeeze some more minutes in the air out of your rig then doing this upgrade and putting the new motors and ESCs in it probably isn't going to do it. Um, now, obviously, if you're not going to just sit there and hover for 12 minutes, that's kind of ridiculous. But it does show you the consumption is is not going to not going to have anything. And and that is known. You know, these props do take a bigger chunk of the air, and so. There we go. That's as sort of scientific as I can make it. The next bit that I did was the unscientific bit, and I then charged it up again. Forget about you know the same rig and and everything else, and I just wanted to fly it. My P2 is fairly meaty in terms of all the gear hanging off the bottom of it. It's f over fourteen hundred grams, um, ready to you know at uh, ready to fly weight. Um, <clears throat> so it is on the heavy side. So I wanted to just take it to the fields out the back of the house and, and, and just give a little hoon around. I didn't, I didn't film it. I was on my own and you know, it would have been a small white slug in the tripod, but, um, needless to say it feels, um, it feels good actually noticeably, um, noticeably better throttle response, uh, when you're climbing much punchier on the climb out run away something's finished um, much punchier on the climb outs um, and it feels more nimble it 
no longer feels quite as heavy as it was. And I think that's because of these, these motors and the ESCs respond more crisply. There's a sharper response. I haven't touched any of the gains. They're all exactly the set, set exactly as they were for the my stock setup. No touching the gains at all. But there's a definite improvement in in the sort of responsiveness to the throttle. And that translates, of course, in a quad to any kind of pitch change. So it feels suddenly a little bit more nimble than it used to, this fat aircraft. If you've got one that's not quite so porky as mine, you'll probably notice uh, you'll notice the difference, you know, more so, um, I would have thought. Um, but certainly it appears that, that what, what the benefit you do get from the new ESC motor prop combination is this this improved handling for want of a better word I, I, this, is, this is a problem it's very subjective you know i can't turn around and say oh yes i measured a a, a, a certain you know a figure eight course and it did this that and the other that's not how it works really it's going to be in the field but certainly from my point of view these this upgrade gives it a a sharper um more nimble feel um, now, if you're somebody who likes to fly a little bit, um, then that's going to be of, of, of interest to you. If you're somebody like me, I'm not a hot rod kind of flyer. I don't hoon it around. Not in this. That's what the 450s are for. This this is this is for, for taking film. But if you want to be able to move it around to different locations and just get a bit more of a uh, quick response out of it, then um, then this may be worth it. What I need to do, obviously, is is wait until these actually come out. As you know, DJI sent me these sort of pre-release to have a look at, which is no strings attached, which is very good of them. Um, so we don't know what the price is going to be. Um, at least I haven't seen anywhere in the UK that's selling them yet. If you know any different, please let me know in the comments down there and everybody else as well, if you've got them being sold in where you are. Um, so are, are they worth fitting? I can't answer that till I know what the price are. In terms of performance, I'd say yes. If you have a, if you either you have a, a heavier aircraft with all the bits attached to it, like I have, then these do give it a bit more of a, a feel of the the old days before you added all the stuff onto it. If you have a sort of more stock aircraft, then you should notice, um, you know, you should notice a, a sort of difference as well. But of course I don't have a purely stock P2 to, to check it out with and compare. Um, so yeah, that was it really, just to let you know what I found. So no overall improvement in flight time, but certainly a an improvement in handling for want of a better word for the feel of the aircraft and and the sort of the the speed of response to the throttle certainly seems sharper which means that it will do what you want it to do quicker if you tend to just go up for a photographic sortie and you're not too interested in you know uh, rapid position changes and that sort of thing and you're just kind of cruising around and you've got an original p2 or an original vision plus would I suggest you would recommend you go out and buy these? That's got to be a judgment call for you. You're probably not going to see as much benefit to doing it as somebody who likes to fly a little bit more. Um, but having said that, the climb performance is better. So if you do a lot of sort of getting up there quicker, more time at your at your at your height, I guess. Um, so there we go. Uh, like I said, not very scientific because I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any way of scientifically saying that you know the feel is better. It's going to be down to how you um, how you judge it, and it's going to be different depending on how your aircraft is set up. But from my point of view, I quite enjoyed flying them with these new motors, and particularly I think the ESCs are doing a good job in there. That response is very sharp, and it might be psychosomatic, but as you could tell from that hover test, maybe it's only me, but. It seemed a little bit more stable in the hover. Uh, that might be because there's a bit more authority coming from these props pushing that air. It's less liable to, to, to small air current changes. Don't know, might be just me. But there we go, that's a brief summary. Um, I'm sorry it wasn't too scientific and I can't dot any I's and cross any T's with numbers for you, but it's it's not that kind of upgrade. Um, when the price comes out, then we'll we'll have a look and, and see if it's um, and see if it's something that's value for money and take it from there. But anyway, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thanks for watching. And I will see you again soon back here on the kitchen table. Until then, cheers.